Welcome back to Rachel's Whimsical Arts and I'm Miss Rachel and I am going to show you the next museum art at home project that we're going to do which is a gallery of famous artworks that you're going to recreate of like three or four or five pictures of famous artists and your inspiration will be your pet at home and if you do not have a cute little fuzzy critter pet to be your inspiration for your self-portrait paintings that you're recreating then you can use a small little stuffed animal and this animal fits in the hand um, it's a little bit bigger than my hand but not by much anything larger than this would be too large because the paintings have to be small like the size of the animal or the stuffed animal so I used a sea otter as my inspiration. Uh, I'm a fan of them. They're lots of fun and playful and cute little guys. And so what I have done is I've looked online for famous artworks. And I've given my students a list of them with images to refer to, such as Van Gogh self-portrait, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, or self-portraits from Frida Kahlo. And the new one that I'm going to show is some pop art by Roy Lichtenstein. And this one will be Girl with the Hair Ribbon. So I'm going to make a mini gallery in a mini museum for my sea otter. And the first thing I did was I picked my, my pictures that I was going to redraw. And I drew them with pencil first. My handy dandy pencil. After I drew them with pencil. And, oh, back up. I measured four by four inch squares with my ruler and I made four of them for all four of my pictures and then I drew the outlines of the faces as best as I could from the famous paintings and to make it easier to see when I paint it with my watercolors I will use a black sharpie where did my sharpie go Oop. here it is I found it I will use a black sharpie or if you have a Sharpie with a fine point, here's mine, a fine point tip, which you should have in your art kit for kids who are in my class, or you can get them at the store, Sharpies, but you want the fine tip part so that you can draw tiny little lines. Besides Sharpies, which are permanent markers, um, don't use a flare pen because most of them are not waterproof. Sharpies are waterproof or water resistant. Uh, you can also use a Micron Pigma uh, pen if you have one of them because they're super small and they're used for uh, comics and anime and special drawings with pen and ink. So you could use that. Now if you don't have a Sharpie with a fine point tip, you could use a ballpoint pen, but I wouldn't recommend it because they could bleed or run with the watercolor paints when you paint on top of them. I would use the Sharpie, okay? Fine point tip. So what I did was I retraced all of those outlines and the details of like the faces and the my furry animal or pet that I'm using as my inspiration because these little lines will show up better when I put my watercolor paints on them. Uh, another tip is you want to erase your pencil marks after you draw with the Sharpie lines for the outline shapes of your, your uh, portraits. So here's what I'm doing. I'm retracing all of these lines and then when I'm done, I'm going to erase those lines, the pencil lines and the permanent marker lines will be left behind, okay? Uh, the Frida Kahlo one is fun. I chose this one. It's got a lot more detail on the hair because in this Frida Kahlo portrait, uh, they made a flower crown on top of their head. And so I love the flowers. I want to have the flowers, so that's why I decided to pick this one but it does mean that this one that I picked has a little more detail to show <laughs> and it takes a little more time for me to recreate it with my marker 
The drawing with the pencil took the longest. The marker, you're just tracing, which is kind of nice because you're not actually redrawing. You're, you're just tracing, you know. Um, let's see, what else? So, uh, you will see and notice that I have my pieces of paper that are from a, you can use a thick mixed media paper from a, a pad of art journal paper that's thick, not thin tracing drawing paper. In other words, you don't want to use scratch paper or tracing paper or printer paper. That's too thin. And when you put watercolors or paint on it, it won't absorb the colors and it will crumble or pill and look too thin and fall apart on you. So don't use that, but you can use thicker art journal paper. Uh, you can use uh, watercolor paper. Okay. Um, if you have an art journal, so those students who are in some of my classes, they can just take one of those pieces of paper out of their journal and uh, carefully tear it out from the seam of the journal and trace your four inch squares and then draw your portraits inside them. So uh, let's see. Um, I'm almost done with the Frida Kahlo one. I am going to, I'm not going to color in and shade all of these lines of her clothing or her face or hair or anything. I'm going to leave that uh, for the color of the watercolors. Okay. Um, let's see. Anything else? Um, you could trace with a black Sharpie some of the stuff behind your person if you wanted. You don't need to. I don't think I'm going to do much of the background. I'm just going to do the face of the portrait of the person and then the rest is going to be painted. Okay, so here's the Roy Lichtenstein girl with a hair ribbon. This one is fun because when you look at the original picture, I'm sorry, I don't have a printout for you to show you right here, but when you look it up online, it's this really big blonde, bright, bold blonde hair with a ribbon in the hair that's striped with red, blue, and white stripes. And so I put on top of the otter face the uh, blonde hair, <laughs> which kind of looks like a funny wig. Um, and it's going to look pretty fun when we're done with it, I think. So, uh, when you do your little faces, again, try to be mindful of tracing the outlines of the nose, um, and the eyes. Now I did make my eyes black. That is up to you. If you don't want to make them black, you don't have to. All right, um, so these eyes are not filled in black. Decided not to do that, why not? Just have a little bit of variety here. And you, if you want to use this with uh, your oil pastel, I mean, sorry, let me reverse that. Okay, if you want to use oil pastels with your watercolors, or if you want to use crayons um, with your watercolors, you could do that too. That is totally up to you. I am going to show you what it looks like with just the watercolors. All right, so here is the girl with the girl with the hair ribbon. And that's the ribbon behind her head right there. So I'm not going to draw lines of the ribbon colors. Well, no, I'm not going to draw the lines. I'm going to paint them. I want them to be painted. And the other nice thing about these bold lines is it will help your picture stand out. If there are any um, colors that are just solid black lines, you could use your Sharpie to do that. Oops. All right. So there she is. I've got all four of these otter faces ready to go. Oh, I'm going to go like that. There we go. Um, let's see, anything else? Oh, I'm going to make her have a little bit of eyelashes like the character. Okay. So 
Now we're going to put away our pens and pencils and we're going to use the eraser and I'm only going to erase my face. So for the Frida, for example, I did not color or draw with my marker all of the um, leaves and things in the background. So I have to be careful not to erase the background things behind my portrait. Okay, so I'm going to erase the inside of my square, my four by four square. I'm not gonna erase my square lines because that those lines are for me to know how to cut out my picture to make it look like a mini painting in a museum or a gallery. And what happens if I don't erase them and I just paint on top of my pencil marks? Can I erase them later? No, you can't. I'm sorry. It doesn't work. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it. But you can paint on top. It just means you're going to see those pencil marks behind the paint because watercolors are not super thick. Sometimes they're really pale. And so you can see through them. Will you see the pencil marks after you've erased them and you've used a marker to outline those lines? No, then you won't see them very much, if at all. If you draw lightly, you won't see those pencil marks at all. Okay? I'm also going to make sure I have moved all of my eraser bits off of my page before I paint. Because if I put my wet paintbrush with paints on top of those little eraser bits, it could get stuck in there and look kind of funny. All right, so this sea otter is going to inspire me, and I'm gonna paint the Roy Lichtenstein for you and see what that looks like. I'm gonna have fun with this. I really enjoy painting um, the animals. So um, I might, and uh, if you have any questions or whatever, please feel free to ask and we, I will be happy to help you out later. Okay, thank you. So let's get started on our painting and see what that looks like.